Maybe I'm just nostalgic Or maybe it's truly magical I'm Andrew. And I'm Brooke. This is a disney podcast. It's a disney podcast and it's 2022. Bet you didn't expect that, did you, bitches? It's been um, six whole years, but we're here. It's been 300 years, right down to the day. Now the witch is back and it's hell to pay. Um, basically, we're here to talk about Hocus Pocus 2, if you didn't get that reference. Um, we came out of retirement just for this. I say that, but we'll probably be back with a few other things. We've been, we've been throwing the idea around cause we know you miss us. Um, and you know what? We miss each other. I don't know about you guys, but we miss each other. <laughs> Maybe the people, the Disney hoes can tell us. All right. Can we bring this back on like at least a once monthly cadence? I think we can. I think we could probably do twice monthly if we really wanted to, but I think once a month is realistic. It's at least Honestly, a starting point. <laughs> I'm just going to say this. Disney also owns Hulu now, so we can really we talk could, about We could talk about everything. Thursday Night Football, which is about to be on, because that's on Hulu, bitches. And I let me fucking tell you. <laughs> we got so much content we can discuss now. Um, we really do. But, hey, it's been a minute. We miss you all. Uh I'll be damned if there was going to be a Hocus Pocus to release and y'all thought we weren't going to be here to talk about it. Okay. We've got a theory to continue. We've got a whole fucking web of connections throughout Pixar that all leads back to the Sanderson sisters. Mm -hmm. How we're going to connect it all today. I honestly don't know how we're going to get there yet, but we will. I'm sure we will. I feel confident about that. But anyway, we all know Hocus Pocus 2 was released, and it took, what, 30 years for this to happen? 29 years. I'm 29 surprised they didn't just years. wait one more year and do a 30-year anniversary release. Why didn't but... they? I feel like that would have been huge. <laughs> yeah. One more year? Yeah. Yeah, one more year. You guys really don't know? Listen, when Disney's sitting on a cash cow and they realize that damn little movie was... Gen all the... The fucking towels, the dish towels on Amazon with the Hocus Pocus the faces on it. millennials eat this shit up. We can't stop. We can't have enough. And they were like, we got to get a movie out now. Or, I don't even want to know what they paid those ladies to do it. Or they're, th but, but you say that, but then, I mean, I agree with you, but then I'm like, why the fuck did this not get any theatrical release? Because they're not going to make that amount of money on the streaming that they... Like I would have, this would have been one of the movies where I said, you know what? I'll see that in theaters. Like I would oh, see I that on the seen big this screen. In theaters, yeah. Like you cannot have Christian mom. I wanted to watch outside. this so badly. That <laughs> I literally theaters. watched it on my honeymoon in Ireland. But here's my proposal. Actually, yeah, that's Andrew, like the best place you could have watched it. You've got it. It all TV? comes back <laughs> was it to on the fucking TV? brave. <laughs> it all comes back to brave. Okay. Yes. I was in Ireland when I watched it. I know that takes place in Scotland, but fuck off for a second. <laughs> it's the same. I was Island. in Ireland. No, mm, no, it's not, honey. It's not. No, different no. islands, but very close together. It's like a 40 minute puddle jumper flight from Dublin to Glasgow. You know, very, very close. It's like here um, in Pittsburgh. Pretty much, you know, yeah. and that's yeah. So anyway, it all see. We've already made the connection. We've there, already yeah. made the fucking connection. So you know, done. <laughs> actually, Andrew, you just made me think of what I what they might do. Is a 30 year theatrical release of the original double feature <laughs> charge like 30 well, bucks yeah. to do both I mean, of them I back to like back in a movie theater. Like people would absolutely pay that money. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, people watch, people watch, they do the the full, you know, Twilight Saga. Yeah, but they which I would like also do. be another, didn't they? They did, they did, they did. So but they with like a that. totally different cast, they set it up for those. We'll get there, we'll did get they? there. Oh, because yeah. of the, the new witches, yeah, because remember. Rebecca from um, Ted Lasso. I don't know her name in real life. Hannah Waddingham. Yeah. She's the, the the witch in the beginning of Hocus Pocus 2. She is then the bird that follows the three girls. 
mm-hmm. at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. So it's like they're the next coven of sisters, right? Even though they're not technically sisters, but whatever. You know, it's no. It's probably gonna movie. be a fucking show. It's, gonna be it's just it's series. just to keep keep squeezing money out of Hocus Pocus franchise once like yeah. the original three are gone. I yeah. think that's what I think they're doing. Um, because what they're counting on is that, and it's true, it's a generational movie. Kind of like, um, what did they compare it to? I think it was uh, Wizard of Oz. So it's a, a movie that like you grow up loving, you show it to your kids, they grow up loving it, they show it to their kids, and it just becomes like a generational movie. That's kind of what Hocus Pocus has turned into, and they're like banking on that, and that's why they want this like new that's era true. of witches, so they can keep, yeah. keep it going. I keep do, making money. I do also like that without them without them distinctly saying it in the movie i like that the vibe of this movie was like the sanderson sisters are massively more popular in salem now than they were ever before where it's like now there's like the sanderson sister lookalike contest and stuff like that where it's like it was kind of a cool way of them taking the plot of the movie and also applying like the real life cult fandom that happened around that first movie into the plot line a little bit which i thought was kind well, of they had too. when they had the first movie everybody loved the sanderson sisters in the town because they talked yeah, about they were in, the huge, in school yeah no it's I mean, just I, I, now I, we have exactly but now it was like a internet. cultural phenomenon thing you know what i mean like it was literally a party mm-hmm. celebrating just the sanderson sisters at Halloween. and i think i think that's honestly touching on like the cult following that it has yeah. in in reality today i think they kind of played that up a little bit i do um, have some beef with the new setup in that little town of salem Okay, well, let's start from the beginning, right? Where they kind of introduce us to them as children, which is something we have never we haven't ever seen before. It wasn't in the no. first one, um, so we got to see the the origin story, so to speak. And I thought those little girls, those little actresses who play the three, who play the sisters, were phenomenal. I thought they killed were it. so good. I thought they absolutely killed it. Like honestly, may have stolen the show for me just because it was like. First of all, unexpected, right? I didn't really ever expect to get the full background on them. And then it was just so fun. Like, it made me feel like a kid again and uh-huh. made me that much more excited for the rest of the movie. So kudos to those girls because they fucking killed it. Yeah. I yeah. also thought it was really clever how they made their dad someone who ran an apothecary because it gave a nice little tie to how they had their curiosity and interest in like potions and making concoctions that led to them being witches. Yeah. That's good. I thought that was very cute. And also just like, you know, the, the Rose apothecary. I like that tie in. Well, maybe they they knew it's Creek is part of the Pixar universe. It's possible. (laughs) I'm just saying, we don't know that it's not. Moira is pretty witchy extremely witchy very witchy where do you think she got that accent from that sounds like old salem english to me are you kidding me (laughs) you think she's addicted to painkillers but it could be crushed up children exactly she needs more souls what do you think are in that wigs souls of children okay and that's why she can't get rid of them (laughs) that's what she uses with all the wigs she takes their their skulls and yeah skin in the hair and makes the wigs exactly i'm just saying stretch i'm just saying Oh, we that's the part that might be a stretch there. <laughs> it does. It I don't does think have so. I think it's right on. Anyway, so that that got me super like into it. And granted, like I was on my honeymoon, so like the fact that I was watching this was a miracle. But it was I. I personally, overall, I'll just say now that I really enjoyed it. I had a great time watching it. Do I have a little bit of beef with it? Yes. I do. And we'll get into that later. But overall, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was fun. I felt like a kid again watching a Halloween movie. I thought it could have been a little bit darker and spookier. It felt oh, maybe a tad bit too fun um, for me. Again, that's a little bit of my, my beef with it. Um, but what about you guys? I, I mean, I love the movie overall. I thought it was really fun. I laughed a lot more than I thought I would. I, I laughed a, a ton. Lot of witty, witty parts. Uh, yeah. Then, then when they go to the like the Walgreens, oh them going through the sliding doors, I was laughing so hard because it just it's so stupid, but it's so funny at the same time. Um, the beef I had though in Salem when they show like the old witch's house, like the Sanderson sister house, 
I hated how they had like all the stuff built up around it because in the original movie, the Sanderson house was back in the woods. It was nowhere near like in town. But then in this version, they had the house kind of right in center of town. I guess that's to show that like time, time has passed, right? Like 30 years past, white people are super greedy and they're going to build, build on everything. We know that like there's no land to be had in America anymore. Um, Disney does like to do that. They, they fucking want, have you seen up? Like we all know they fucking Wally. love that shit. Yeah. Yeah. They love it. Again, okay, Pixar movies, it all comes back. <laughs> See? It all comes back. Mm. But but I think that did take away from a little bit of the creepy factor. I think you're right. It felt like too I don't want to say mainstream, but almost like too too much of an afterthought to have the Sanderson Sanderson sister. We're- house like right there that's how you know what i mean it wasn't like creepy and like mythical and kind of like this experience was like oh just another place in town yeah and especially because so the girls go out to their spot in the woods like the the new coven girls where they have like their spot where the sisters like like it should have been where that house is supposed to be because that's where their space was i don't know i I agree with that i do there was a i heard I heard someone talk about this on another podcast and, and they made a really good point where they were like, do you think when Disney was making the first Hocus Pocus and then they're getting around to doing the second one, like no one expected it to be the cult sensation that it was. He's like, you almost feel like when you're watching this one that they were like, do we really make our three main characters uh, kill a child in the first five minutes of the first movie? Cause that's a uh, real hard to sell right now for us because like, in the first movie, they straight up murder Emily. <laughs> like she is a dead. Did child they murder the Emily, three. or did Emily willingly give her soul? You can make an argument. Either, she wasn't fighting. Way, she didn't they, fight. She didn't fight at all. No, I feel, but I do feel. And that's I the spell. Like they, I know that that's the spell, but still. <laughs> I I do yeah, feel like calm. the uh, the the eating of children thing seemed like they were trying to downplay it a little bit in the script this time because <laughs> it was way more Which just like Look at these wacky ass witches. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a shame because that was part of the spooky. That's what I'm saying. Like it didn't yeah. have quite the same level of spookiness to it. Um, not that the first one's scary by any means, but it was like, oh, they're trying to like kill. They're trying to take the souls of children. And this time there's children all around and they're like, no, we just want to kill the reverend's, you know, descendants, which like I get we reverend descendants, like nightmare and the Puritans. I mean, reverend sound nightmares. So I get it. Um, but it did, it did kind of lose me there a little bit because I was like, just kill a child. Do it. The Republicans yeah. will hate it, and I'm all for that. God, do <laughs> they ever. <laughs> I will say they did have a little moment, like, in the beginning. I forget exactly what the lines were, but Winifred, she was seemed a little more witchy in the beginning. And, like, when she was, like, grabbing at him and stuff like that. And so I thought they were going to be a little more spooky with it but then it really toned down right yeah it was like as soon as they did like the the potions at the walgreens or whatever it was right yes and it really kind of took a a downturn and then it was just like oh we're gonna be fun and goofy from here on out Mm -hmm. yeah i agree mambo i i thought the same thing um (laughs) rowdy's finally quiet during these and (laughs) rowdy is actually had tucked himself into his own bed under the blanket totally fine he was chewing a bone right before we started uh recording so i was like oh fuck it's gonna be like old times but mambo <laughs> it's your time to Dude, shine when now. he would have a whole house to himself and he would plop himself on the microphone cable to chew <laughs> that was back when he was a good boy and now yeah. he like hates every person that enters the home who's not me you know the pandemic did a number on all of us he did yeah. i'll tell you he did really good at the wedding he was great at the like, wedding i couldn't believe it he was fantastic Side note, my dogs were at my wedding and they were very good boys. Yeah, <laughs> they got to be on the website. Uh- <laughs> Although we when we were saying our vows, obviously Rowdy was like, blah, blah, blah. he was like, don't do it, mom. Well, he was, was crying. He I was, was gonna crying. say, was Rowdy's crying better or worse than the child yelling, I don't want to be here the whole time? Which one was that? Because Emerson- that was Dia's kid. <laughs> Oh, was that Nora? Oh my Nora. God! Because because Emerson was like, I want them to be done, and I was like, Dude, me too. I don't want to be up here. Like, get me. I out made of this. that as short as it could possibly be, kid. Calm the hell down. I thought it was hilarious. I thought the kids were fantastic. I was like, You're reading the room correctly. We all want to get out of here. Um, uh, but yeah. Anyway. So so yeah, I Hocus Pocus. I feel like the tone of Hocus Pocus too. Like the the end, the end message is different. 
also though because when you think about the first movie like as much as the witches were like the standout stars that everybody loved the movie was that movie was about the survival of max allison and and the kids from these witches but this movie's so much more about the relationship of the witches as sisters it, which changes right. it too i'm so glad you brought this up because i also have beef with the fact that like in the first movie they were fine like winifred was just fine to like watch her sisters die and be like i'm gonna suck the soul out of max before like i have to die but now like in this one her sisters get taken away and she's like i can't go on without them and it's like 30 years ago 29 years ago bitch you were fine <laughs> to let them go as long as you were sucking you know the soul out of max however you want to take that um <laughs> you know like i was like damn like things have certainly changed i guess you, maybe hell is a good place you know they maybe. want us to think it's not but maybe it really bonds people is that where they went <laughs> Remember, they talk about how they're friends with Satan in the first yeah. one. They were eating Master. children's souls. I don't think that gets you into heaven. Also, speaking of that whole thing with the conservative Christian women upset about the movie, I'm like, do they not remember the first one? We're, wait, wait. Conservative Christian women were upset with this movie? I mean, I'm not surprised, but like, what was You don't know? Movie? Are you joking? There there's, a, there's a petition that if you watch this movie too loud, you could accidentally... Let Satan into your house through their spells that they because play. because the spells <laughs> and the, the women are trying to the witches are trying to eat the souls of children. Yeah, well, not really so much in the second one. That was the first one. Which did you see the TikTok of witches. Mary Sanderson in the interview from 1993 when she's a bad bitch, a bad fucking bitch, bad bitch. She is a feminist. Oh my God! Yes, like, I did see Kathy the Jimmy. Well, she made the comment though. She about was like, witches. "I don't want to be offensive to witches. Like, there are real witches out there, and it's not a bad thing. It's like a magical, very spiritual thing, and I want to be respectful to them." And I was just like, "When she had said yeah. back in the day, witches were known as they were women doctors healers. and nurses and healers, yes. or they had given abortions, and that's where the idea of eating children came because pregnant women left without their babies, so they thought the women doing, were eating doing that. the Lord's work, quite frankly. So really, it's just dumb white women being dumb and bitching about nothing they know, or is it dumb white men being dumb and then brainwashing dumb white women? And then smart white women were like, no, fuck you. And then like everyone else who was not white was already on the level. They already understood. It's a white person thing. It's fucking trash. The white and I say that never as a really person. complain about the movies, though. Do you notice that they never really bitch about movies? They bitch about like concepts. Yeah. Concepts no, and ideas. They, yeah. they will bitch about movies, too. <laughs> Like, they bitch about the concepts in the movies. Like in yeah. this movie, it's like the oh, the witches, you'll invite Satan. It's like get the fuck out of here. I saw, These I witches saw... are singing one way or another. I'm gonna find you, I'm gonna get you, get you, get you. You really think that this is what's get gonna you, let Satan you, into you, your house? You. Well, I literally your kids doing lines at high school parties in the bathroom, okay? And Preach. like you're worried about fucking hocus pocus too. I get saw exactly more than one person complaining that this movie had, and I quote. Too many drag queens being shoved down our throat. There were three for a single shot during the Sanderson sister lookalike contest. Also, do they understand how many drag queens have inspired characters throughout yes. cinematic history? Yes. Like, Ursula? it's stupid. It, <laughs> like, she is the prime example. Ursula is based on a fucking drag queen. And if you don't think <laughs> Ursula is the number one bad bitch in the Disney villain space, you're wrong. Because she is. We have a whole episode about Disney villains. Yeah. Go back and listen to it. I don't even you know if also, she makes number one, but she yeah. should have. <laughs> you also can't, like, I feel like if you walked into a drag club and threw a rock, you couldn't hit a drag queen that doesn't have some type of hocus pocus drag, like, loaded in her. Or, like, it's Bette Midler and witches. It's, like, the perfect Venn diagram for what yeah, a drag queen's looking so, to do. I mean, people just don't. <laughs> I feel like Christianity... Yeah. For you know, listen, believe it in whatever you want to believe. I do not care. And maybe this just goes for religion in general. It's like they just don't want other people to have fun. <laughs> That's how I feel. And it's like you can kind of put that on any religion. I feel like maybe not all of them. I, I'm not well educated enough to really say that. But Christianity in particular, it's like, you know what? Don't fucking have fun. I don't, don't think you it's dare that. entertain the thought of anything fun or funny or whimsical or magical. We don't we don't do that. But it's like, but you believe Moses parted the Red Sea. You tell me you're telling me he's not a fucking witch. Was it even Moses? I don't even fucking know. 
Yeah, it was Moses. You got that right. Yeah. Um, See, I learned something. Well, that's so I was at a wedding a couple weeks ago and uh, I was talking to the person. Not mine. Not Not yours. Uh, I was talking to the guy who was officiating it and he he said possibly my favorite sentence I've heard in a in a really long time. Um, We were talking about religion and he said, like, Jesus is a really dope guy. It's just that his fucking fan club is obnoxious. And I was like, that is I mean, that's that's it in a nutshell. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Same could be said for Swifties. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. And most Philly sports fans. We Really, there's a whole. Tell me about it. (laughs) Fucking tell me about it. My God. But. Really, I think Hocus Pocus 2 is super fun. Um, the the scene where they go to the the pharmacy is it, was it a Walgreens? Was it branded? I don't think they branded it. I can't, yeah, I, 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 say, guess I don't think they, they did. did. But it was fucking hilarious. I'm Dude, that was sure they so did. funny. Um, oh no, it I is loved that. Yeah, they go to a local Walgreens according to the okay. Wikipedia page. Then putting it the is... fucking eating the fucking skincare yeah, like, like <laughs> I was losing, and then the the Snapchat filter. <laughs> of them looking beautiful <laughs> they're just like oh yes and it's like i feel the same <clears> way <throat> i i pretty much eat skincare every night and then i'm more or less on snapchat every night as well i'm like oh f- yeah this shit's worth every- it and i wake up in the morning i'm like god damn it I was every high. once in a while <laughs> every once in a while someone will be like oh i just didn't think it was funny and to that i say that if the shot if 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 Catholic, if Kathy and Jimmy floating on two Roombas, rogue Roombas, <laughs> isn't the peak of comedy for you, I don't want to be friends with you because that yeah, shit you're wrong. never got old. <laughs> like, there was, what, where's my phone? It was, for me, it was them, like, when they'd start, like, fucking cleaning stuff and they just, and start going. <laughs> or when they did the salt ring they around the witches. They from the salt. <laughs> like, I was, I saw them, I was like, they are not going to eat that salt up right now. <laughs> It's dying. That's like it's so stupid, but it's so it's funny. Per- it's so good. The plotting <laughs> is so good. I will That's say that's what though, it was. As when they, as the auto- oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say that when like the the girls, the new girls, were like, "You're our idol," and whenever it's like idol, my favorite word. I was just like, "Yes," <laughs> <laughs> like same. <laughs> Go ahead. I interrupted. I'm so sorry. No. Um, the sliding doors. Yes. The one thing I thought was funny about that is the fact that they put that in this movie. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, well, they had those fucking doors back in the 90s. You know what I mean? Like, But those they didn't aren't really new. go anywhere. That's yeah. true. With them. Like, they went to the school. School's not really going to have that. And um, that movie we... took place in one night. Yeah. We also. <laughs> yes. Look, you can't. As fun as it is, we we talked about this in a text chain together. Like, you have to shut your brain off on the inconsistencies. Like, you do. Because, like, do. in the first movie, it's like Winifred doesn't know what a bus is, but is able to be like, what, Can I see your driver's permit? When she's like talking to Max, like, you just have to ignore it. It's one of those where I think because Disney usually does such a good job of like filling all the holes. And they usually do such a good job with research. So when I watch their movies, I don't expect those little things. And then I, I like to pick them out. I, I mean, I kind, I will say, I kind of liked that they kept with that inconsistency, though, because if they had gone with, you know, Hocus Pocus two and and not done those things and like made them, you know, less aware of like modern conveniences, like sliding doors and just kind of, you know, even modern songs. It wouldn't have connected with the first one so much because of those idiosyncrasies. So I think it it works in this case just because they fucked up that first time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's um, weird. but I think uh I will tell you right now, my biggest gripe with this movie, the biggest one, is the fact that specifically they didn't have two former characters in it. Like, I think you can make a case for all of them having at least a fucking cameo. Like, come on. You could have at least done that. But Somewhere, the fact some... that you didn't have Jay and Ice pop up at I was all, say, are you kidding me? I don't. Are you kidding me? Because, like, there's a couple things there. A, how, how hard would it be to get either one of those actors who has done almost nothing <laughs> since that movie to show right. up for a cameo? They were liking my tweets a few year, yeah. years ago about them. So but I know even if available. they were like the cashiers at Walgreens or something, like something real. Simple. Okay. Well, I was thinking, so the dumb boyfriend, why wasn't like Jay his dad? 
or I would even say further, yeah, like so, yeah, something like that. Or why? This is going to sound stupid. I don't know. I I have to rethink this a little bit. But in my head, I'm like, why create a character that didn't exist in the first movie to be the magic shop owner when it could have been like Ice and Jay's magic shop, like being trapped with that book. They like bond it with the book, and yeah. that's why they're trying to rewake it. You know what I mean? Like, although I did love that it was what is his name Sam Richardson. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, I think you should leave is like one of the funniest fucking shows of all time. But it was like it seeing him specifically because I watch I think you should leave like kind of took me out of the moment for a second because I was like, oh, little buff boys. Who's who's the cream of the crop? You know, <laughs> like that's all I could think about it. When, every time I saw him, um, I mean, I love him regardless, but it did take me out of it a little bit just because I'm so stuck on him being cream of the that, crop little buff boys that was a little bit for me with um with tony hale playing the mayor of salem who was buster on arrested development and i'm like <gasps> that yes he's yes, just that like too. Still. <laughs> yes <laughs> i can't every, believe i forgot that <laughs> every time he showed up i was like that's just he's still just playing buster yep, he's still <laughs> he's still buster he's just the mayor of a town now with a daughter Here we was go. he not in another dis i was thinking he was in some other disney movie but i couldn't think of what else i remember he may have from. been i know him specifically from arrested development but that i was I, that show I didn't watch his obsession with getting that candy apple is so entertaining to me. <laughs> like, I mean, I feel that way about certain things too. It's like this fucking thing. You can only get Andrew, from this one place. He was, well, he was the vo voice of Forky in Toy Story 4. But if you're recognizing him facially, did you see um, Love, Simon? Yeah. He's the principal in Love, Simon. Yeah, that's that that's like that. always super touchy. Is that feeling. about the, the <clears throat> special needs? No. That's, yeah, that's about the kid are you, coming are out you of the a closet, Republican but... Christian woman, bro? <laughs> <laughs> is, 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 is it about the gay boy? Is it the gay boy? Because he's gay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. See, mental illness. <laughs> It's just that wrong in the been, brain. That literally could not have been a better. What? What, what am I that, thinking of? There's thinking one of about Simon someone... Birch. <laughs> am I? I think about I am Sam. <laughs> maybe <laughs> oh man rough i With that Dakota movie made me cry With no there was one her. recently did she die That's i think Simon. i asked that before no dakota fanning dakota fanning was just in something recently that i saw she's still good oh she's in um she's in um 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 once upon a time in hollywood oh yeah mm. i watched that on the flight back from uh dublin it's a fun yeah. movie is it because uh, quick aside on you know Quentin it's Tarantino's got a fun 20 minutes fun time. <laughs> it's well the very end is fucking hilarious i yeah. died um but it felt like a movie about nothing yeah i mean i yeah. think that that was i was like what was it, this right. movie about like we talk about like the manson cult a little bit at the end um what the fuck was all of this before like i don't really know i don't really know what we're doing here and granted, I, like Leo's in it, so like I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> but like, what what was that for? I don't. Whatever. Anyway, yeah, it's she's it's in that for like Clinton 15 minutes, <laughs> and she's just like an angry, dirty trash hippie. So it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, back to Hocus Pocus. Po back to so. Hocus Pocus. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know how we didn't have more cameos. I love that, you know, Billy Butcherson was in it. Hi, Mambo. You're making biscuits. <laughs> He's making biscuits. He's very cute. Hello. Um, yeah, no, Billy, Billy being in there, getting a little bit of a backstory to to Billy. I loved the backstory to Billy because she's like, I'll marry Billy Butcherson. And he's just like, what the fuck? No, no. <laughs> Billy's no. accent though seemed a little off to me like it seemed a little too cockney yeah <laughs> it was look doug was making some That's weird calls point. he went very like <laughs> to be fair oh, he, he, not... <laughs> like... he had he like three lines like, in the cockney first movie accent at all in the first he one barely an english accent. Like, rah, 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 yeah, rah, rah, rah. yeah. But then know? it was like oh hello and I'm like, i do i do like is that, that how i this... spoke in puritan times <laughs> I like that there's this actual horrifying implication in that movie <laughs> that like he 
been fully alive and cognizant just chilling in a grave for the last 29 years because like he didn't re-die when the witches died like i'm like it's pretty fucked up oh yeah because he just went back down and laid in his grave yeah. honestly that's what my my whole life has felt like he just took a nap yeah that's what that's what living feels like i feel like that's a metaphor for life sorry i just got a uh a political text. Uh, I got a political I, text. Same one because I got last about night, 14 of them. <laughs> they were like, um, hey, vote for you know Doug Mastriano, blah blah blah. And I was like, Never. why the fuck would I vote for Voldemort? <laughs> yeah. Jesus and it's like Christ. people texting and they're like, what? I'm like, why the fuck would I vote for Voldemort? And then they didn't text me anymore. I was like, yeah, fuck off. I already sent him my ballot. I did a mail in because I'm lazy. Somebody asked me if I was voting for Shapira. I said well, I'd be kind of a piece of shit if I voted for the other guy, wouldn't I? And they were like, yeah, guess you're right. Thank you for the support. And there she went. Do you want to hear some bullshit I did? Yeah, I do. Unrelated. Of course we do. <laughs> I, had a, I went to the dentist today. And do you know how when you're at the dentist, they give you the mouthwash and you spit into that thing and it sucks it down? Yeah. I go to spit in this thing and I didn't realize how close I was to it. And it like latched to my face. And was like, <laughs> And I started going like this and it like ripped out of the hose and they're like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I was like, <gasps> I feel like you oh, go to the, the dentist air out of my lot. lungs. Do you just like the dentist? No. So I, I feel like you're always I there. I have gone to the dentist in like mm, four or five See, years. See, that's right. I have a, I have an appointment in December and I'm, I'm in the same boat. It's been like, has four, it been a while? Years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can only I imagine the cavities. <laughs> I oh, had to you, deep I cleaning. had the same thing. The deep cleaning. You have to go like three or four times and in a like row. And it's like multiple sessions. So I got yeah. those done. And then this session was my cavity filling. Oh, man. This Do is going to be my you... life. Yeah. Be... So I'm not sure if you're going to have the same now. situation I had. But because they need to do such an extensive deep cleaning for me, because it was like seven years between the last time I had insurance and working at HomeNet um, or working at our last job. Um, yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> Now I have to go every three months, like for years, because usually it's every six months. I have to go every three months because they need to monitor to make sure that my gum line is growing back. I have to go every four for the next like oh year or God. two. You guys are yeah. fucking me up. I should just not go is what you're saying. And just, I no, go, go, my, go. None go, of my insurance you're gonna need covered that, that either. I yeah. pay that all See, last pocket. time I was at the dentist, it was like five years ago around there. And they were like, yeah, you know, you'll have to come in for more cleanings, but like your teeth are great. If you just come in for your cleanings regularly, you'll coast for the rest of your life. And that was even with that's my what they told too. me. And, yeah. and you were just like, I'm not I coming did. to the and cleanings. I was like, you know what? I, I'm not doing <laughs> shit. Well, I have extremely bad dental anxiety. Like, yeah. I told Andy that I made an appointment and I was shaking and I had tears in my eyes just to tell him oh, that no. I made the appointment. And he was like, I've never seen you like this. I didn't know it was this bad. And I was like, yeah, my whole life. I'm just fucking petrified. I used to sit in the chair. They would like, you know, clean my teeth and I'd just be crying silently. The thing that it's just, it, me... it gives me the ick. It grosses me out. I think none of it is cool. Like fucking put me under because my brain, I can't handle it. I don't know my least favorite, my least favorite part about going to the dentist in general is that I'm not sure if you experienced this, Andrew, but the, uh, the the dental hygienists really want to talk to you in a situation where it is very difficult for you to respond back to their conversation or their statements. Just like, uh-huh, ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like... uh-huh. <laughs> That's why I like my dentist. One, he's very chill, plays very good music. So, like, today the Beach Boys were playing. He plays all different stuff. That yeah. was just today. He was playing, like, 60s and 70s. And I'm in the chair like, <laughs> just humming the fuck away loud as can be. And they're like singing and stuff too. Um, so, but I had a dentist growing up that I absolutely hated going to. It was like how you were saying, I just, I, I didn't cry, but I hated going to the dentist every time I had to go. But this dentist, I have no problems going to. He's never, like everything he always does, it never hurts. Um, and it's never like an inc like a, I almost fell asleep when I was getting my deep cleaning. Yeah. It was like you, very chill. You should ask if you can wear like headphones and listen to I, music I was or a podcast. Say, I need or to something. listen to Midnight's or something. Yeah. You know. And then just like Midnight's ta fucking yeah, Taylor, the new Swift's Taylor Swift new album release. Yeah, I know. That's why I said Midnight's. Yeah. 
Yeah. You don't fucking like Lavender Haze? Get the fuck out of here, dude. You don't think Midnight Rain <laughs> is the best song on the album? Get the fuck out of here, okay? I will fight you. You know, the fact that you had such good music at your DJ <laughs> and now you're promoting this trash album on the podcast is just insane. And yeah, I said a trash album. Don't All you right, everyone, drop we are me. looking for a new co-host on the Disney Do <laughs> podcast. Call yeah. Taylor Swift. Yeah. What? So I don't... This isn't an album I love from start to finish. If we're going to get into this really quick. There's a couple boppers, There is. This is not an album I love from start to finish. Like, say, Fearless, Red, 1989. I didn't even love Lover from start to finish. I mean, I, Folklore, Evermore, very, very good. Um, but there are some strong, strong contenders. I mean, the thing. So everyone's into Antihero right now. Garbage. Not into it. The the sexy baby line ruins everything. Ruins the whole song and you can't convince me otherwise it gives me the ick so hard I'm i was like, gonna say taylor swift always has like that one line that ruins an otherwise perfectly fine song like remember how much the song me is ruined just by her being like spelling is fun like or when she, she's like taylor can't come to the phone right now yeah. why she's, she's dead, dead. dead. I don't, so yeah but i'll be very i have been very vocal about this since it came out but i do not like reputation i like call it yeah. what you want like on reputation and um, this is why we can't have nice things. And that's it. That is it. Two I'll, songs. On the I'll um, compromise with you. I like tight curl Taylor Swift. I don't old, like old T. after tight curl. T yeah, I like country you like, girl so, Taylor Swift. Do you like Fearless? The album Fearless? Our song is a slam Door. Door. Like, Isn't that it. on Taylor I'll, Swift, though? I'll, that's on Taylor Swift. Her debut album, I thought. That's not on Fearless. I'm not going to know the albums. Yeah, so that's not on Fe mm. Fearless. is my favorite album of hers of all time. I also, I fucking love Red. Red is one of my favorite albums. Her 1989 is a fucking masterpiece. Um, and I really liked Lover, too. I really did. Fucking masterpiece. Lover has... You tell 1989? For, for its, your wildest dreams. Yeah, I was going to say for... Ah, ah. And, it doesn't um, matter how many, like, valleys are in Lover. Like, the... the Heights of Lover oh, so are so good. good. Cruel Summer yeah, is maybe like, one of her best songs she's ever written. Yeah, Cruel Summer is great. Cruel I forgot so you existed is a great that song. I love Paper Rings as a. I as like just a single. I like, almost, It is a poppy. I ass almost song. quoted Paper Rings in my vows. I was gonna say because I talked about how I didn't. I don't like surprises. But in that song, Taylor Swift says something like, um, "I hate accidents, except when we went from friends to this." And I was gonna put that in my vows, yeah. and I didn't. It's a great line. It's so good. Like, Paper Rings is, I remember that was a song where I was like, I get the appeal of this album Although, immediately. Although, so I, Speak Now is okay. I, I love Sparks Fly and Enchanted is a fucking bop. I will go wild to Enchanted. Um, the only thing that brings Enchanted down is that it is about, um, what's his name? Adam from uh, Owl City. Oh. Ooh. What were you thinking there, T? <laughs> Yikes. <Ooh. laughs> All right. Well, speaking of Enchanted, yes, witches can witches. enchant things. <laughs> That's right. Back on track, folks. Here we are. Um, yeah, where were we? <laughs> I think I think we're at the point where we can give final thoughts. Final We've covered thoughts. most of the movie. <laughs> uh, so my final thoughts are the same as my beginning thoughts. I thought it was super fun. I loved it. I think overall they did right by the first one. I wish, yeah. I really wish they had had more cameos from the original cast. I wish Jay and Ice had been involved somewhere. I think that really would have put it over the edge for me and just felt like a complete circle that we did. Um, Hannah Waddingham be, being in it, I was just like, why is Rebecca from Ted Lasso here? But, you know, she had a beautiful costume, so we'll let it fly. Uh, I loved it. I will definitely watch it again. This will be in my rotation for Halloween for sure. It doesn't beat the original. I don't think anything ever could. Um, and, and I'll be interested to see what they do in the future with this new coven. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, well, I, I did want to shout out that I love that you like literally watched it at midnight as it dropped because Brooke and I both woke up the morning after it came out with you being like, it's so good. I was also like five I hours. It four there. times. It was like 5 a.m. Yeah. where I was. <laughs> I watched it four times so far. I've only watched it oh, once. I need to one. give it another another go um, when I'm not like jet lagged in Ireland. This was, it was good. It was good both or the other times too. So it it holds up. As just like a as like a horror Halloween person, this has been an unreasonably good year for a lot of like new horror content. The new Halloween, like Halloween movie? content dropping. Is it good? I like the new Halloween movie. Um, 
the the uh cabinet of curiosities is like my new obsession that just dropped on netflix which is like uh del toro doing like his own version of tales from the crypt with these really fucked up weird no. shorts um but like I midnight club was really sweet that was like a sweet little the like, new season YA of what we do in the thing. shadows is really funny fantastic Bro, that was really good did you new- see 28 days haunted on not yet it's next on my list is 28 days haunted <laughs> i have one episode left very good bro okay they go and s- stay in a haunted house for 28 days with the crew and there's multiple ones across the u.s you like the ghost stuff right? i do but i could never do that actually i'll have to send you this tiktok i send it to g it's like what you'll see if you wake up during a sleepover at my house at 3 a.m and it's just someone eating ramen watching ghost adventures i was like yeah accurate that's me <laughs> um <laughs> yes and also the most horrifying thing that Netflix could possibly drop in the month of October, we've got the third season of Love is Blind happening oh, right now. Oh, talk and about I'm, a I'm caught fucking up. The terror. new one's dropped tonight, right? It's say 26th? 27th. There are yeah. No, no, the new one's dropped yesterday. Oh, I gotta yeah, watch them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is this is the trashiest collection of men and women that they've had like, in a while. But like, what, this is what bothers me about Love Is Blind is like it it's really could be an experiment about finding love, and instead there's like let's make it garbage. Yes, no, I, I want to see them do it with gay guys. I, I just why, that would be fucking why hilarious. Don't they? Oh my god! Also, okay, I know it would be traumatic. They would open the doors and be like ah, and just well, walk away. Well, you I, need they to would give have your to keep final them all thoughts separately. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh. Because I have some other things to discuss. Very Everybody. <laughs> Hocus Pocus 2 will remain in my heart forever. I felt as though it was a compelling uh, rendition and <laughs> triumph to carry on the torch of the coven of the witches of the Sanderson clan. And I do believe that while we couldn't think of a lot of things tonight, it does have tie-ins to the Sanderson sister theory just give me time when it I does tie back beers. to Brave. Oh my god, I just realized the Sanderson sisters are here in Salem, which is runs along the Appalachian Mountains. It does. And Brave is in Scotland, which is at the other end of the Appalachian Mountains. So maybe they travel underneath the mountains under the ocean. What? <laughs> the, there's the Appalachian, Appalachian mountains. mountains in Scotland. Yeah, because back when it used to be Pangaea, that was all one mountain range. But why aren't there more of the Appalachian mountains in Ireland then? Because that would have been between well, us. Like the the mountains that are over there, I don't know why, but I'm just saying they're over uh, there. Listen, they might I, be in I, Ireland I just, too. I was just asking some clarifying questions. I trust you wholeheartedly, um, and you're exactly. They might right. be in Ireland too. You're but exactly they are in Scotland as well. right. But, they travel back and forth through it's the Appalachian Mountains. And we all know the Appalachian Mountains are witchy as fuck, okay? We've all seen Blair Witch Project. Very old. Like, yeah. some of the oldest, they're older than the Rockies. They are. They're they're, the Appalachians yeah. are old as shit. Very old. Very Very, witchy. very geriatric Lots mountains. of Native American bones and spirits run through them as well, which adds to the witchiness. And, and dinosaur bones. And don't get me started on the dinosaur Pixar films, okay? It's all connected. All connected. Yeah. Um. I forget what I was gonna fucking say. Were you gonna sound off on more Disney? No, it future? wasn't. Dis- it was not Disney related at all. But I had wanted to get so gonna talk shit. Welch's perspective on something, and now I forget. It doesn't matter. I think maybe it had something to do with like having, you know, gay people on. Leslie like- Jordan dying. Oh, R.I.P. Obviously. Oh, it was. It did have something to do with that because you were going to ask me my opinion right after we were talking about gay people and love is blind and how that would go. Yeah, I forget now. But it was something about like gays and being on dating shows and like why don't we have? Oh, I know what it was. It was had nothing to do with that. But Uh. (laughs) so in the UK, so when I was over there the first time, I I saw the show called Gogglebox, and essentially what it is, it's like normal people like us. And we watch like TV shows and movies that this network tells us to watch. And they film like we have a whole setup and it just films us with our commentary, watching these different shows, movies, documentaries, what have you, even the news. And I loved it. And so when we were over in the UK again, this time I found it and was watching it again. And it's still fucking hilarious. And I thought you and I in particular with Matt for for added color would just be perfect for an American goggle box series. We just watch (laughs) shows and we just talk talk through them about all of our thoughts and feelings as it's happening. I was like, there is not a better trio suited to launch this show in America than this Triforce right here. Listen, 
<laughs> I always had the idea to do one of those just specifically with HGTV um, and just trash talk everything that I see on that. Uh, but um, I want you to show. watch like sports you know? and fucking talk about but, it. <laughs> oh, I would, I could, and I would tell people about the gameplay. Yeah. You know, what's I, happening. I'll I describe it. Welch, more than any other person, I want to watch like the Super Bowl with Welch. Like with Welch just giving running commentary, turn off the volume and just be no, you exclusively gotta keep the Welch's play by play. Because you know <laughs> the you best commentary to... will be during the halftime show when Rihanna's there. <laughs> He's gonna be like, There's oh, gotta yeah, be people... here's Riri. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have people who know sports there because they're really gonna get pissed off because I'll talk yes. like I know what's going on and I just you just have to have the confidence of Jeffrey Dahmer. You know what I mean? Just really go I see for a it. player's name on TV. I'm like, wow, they're they're really I'm just saying if there's that tight any... end and they're like, what the fuck? They're they're a fucking tight end. And people just go ape shit. If if there's any producers of Gogglebox listening to this podcast by chance and you wanna yeah, and you wanna version. launch in America, this is the crew right I here. I need a job. <laughs> me too. Listen, baby needs to make some money. I will watch whatever you need me to watch. Heating oil is over five dollars a gallon right now. Fifty five cents is not doing <laughs> shit for me. <laughs> brutal stay tuned stay tuned we'll have more disney though hopefully soonish <laughs> yeah hopefully um i don't remember any of our handles at disney podcast on instagram um we have a facebook group called disney it's still active right um ask dan and i'll tell you and then oh he's gonna listen to this and he's fucking ready for your ass i was I gonna bet. say dan Emma, Nicole, those are the three people that I know for a fact will listen to this Ready. and message me Ready. how excited they are that we so put out like a new episode. So like the 8,000 other people that listen to our episodes. <laughs> anyway, it's been great. We love you. We miss you. And we will be back. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> listening to the Geekscape Network.